Let's look at discipline. What is discipline? Three factors of success. Knowledge, discipline, or character and environment. Character includes discipline, integrity, all of that, hard work, and the rest of them. Being studious and all that. It carries 40%. I'm going to rewrite this thing and make it into four stages. So see how I do it. I break this into two. The first is preaching. Preaching contributes only 2% to success. You can never produce a doctor with preaching. You can never produce a pharmacist with preaching. You can never produce a carpenter with preaching. In what people become in life, preaching only contributes 2%. And this is what pastors do. When they finish this pulpit, they think they've done well. Think about it. Go to secondary school. Preach to the kids about the wonders of being a flight captain. They all take the wonders of being a medical doctor. And when you finish, all the kids in the class want to be doctors. And you leave them for the next 15 years. None of them will become a doctor. Preaching will create the motivation and the hunger, but it doesn't deliver the technology to become it. So to get 10% that knowledge gives, you have to take it beyond motivating people. You know, motivational speaking. You have to take it beyond preaching. You have to take it beyond that. There has to be teaching. There has to be training. There has to be reading. People must be put through to go and study. There has to be practicals. And then you deliver to the people the full weight of knowledge. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Now, you see why many people don't change. They go to church, hear that someone on Sunday, and they expect that is it. You're joking. If you don't have something that you study when you get home, take that thing and study it back. And maybe go for trainings. If such ministers don't have training systems and go for, you know, and have discussion, you will see the man he has stayed so many years, demons are still harassing him. Yet one message could have cured that if that message is restudied, is discussed, and he submitted to, you see, there is such a thing as a training system. That's why they gave us schools. So a person that does only pulpit speaking or does only... See, look at how many schools we are building under this one ministry. We could have just come preach on Sunday and leave you. There's no way. There's no way. God, these two days you are going to spend here might do for some of us more than seven years of going to church. So we'll come to discipline. So if you have 2% preaching... Other means of communicating knowledge completes the remaining 8% to now deliver 10% weight of knowledge. But still, in success factor, discipline, character carries more weight than what you know. If knowledge is all that people need, all your classmates will be successful wherever you find them. Sometimes the realities of life show. You see that guy that had two one. You meet him somewhere after some years. You wonder why is he like this? Why is he still at this level struggling? But he was more intelligent than the other one in school. But out there, life is disciplining him. You know why? Because there's another component that must be added to knowledge to produce success. It's called what? Discipline. So there are two types of discipline. Broad spectrum, if you will. Or let me change the word. There are two types of pain. You know, discipline is not, whether it's self or external, it's not, um, it's not like watching TV. It normally disturbs your comfort zone. Am I correct? There's a difference between somebody uh, 
sleeping or relaxing and somebody working hard. Nothing good comes easy. Write it down. I know you know it. Write it down. He has not entered well. Nothing good comes easy. So in life, there are two kinds of pain. There is the pain of discipline. And there is the pain of regret. There is the pain of discipline on one hand. And there is the pain of failure. There is the pain of discipline on one hand. There is now the pain of externally imposed discipline. Let me put it another way. There is the pain of discipline on one hand. One hand and there is the pain of circumstantially imposed discipline. The pain of discipline is two grams of pain. I can even tell you two milligrams, but two grams. But the pain of regret is two tons of pain. The pain of discipline, yes, there is pain, a little discomfort, but it's something I can handle, like reading my books. Settling down to attend lectures. But the pain of regret, nine years have passed. I don't have a degree and now I've been thrown out of school without a degree and now it's following me because I can't get a job and now the girl I would have loved for ma- to marry refuses to marry me because I'm jobless and all that and now I'm still trekking after 15 years I should have been a graduate and now I can't even pay my rent and now the, see the effect the, all the problems just one thing is causing for the person that's why I'm here now, taking all this insult, walking in this kind of place. Because then, I didn't see, that's sitting down to attend lecture, sitting down to do my practicals, sitting down to read my books, even though I didn't like it, but it was like two grams of pain compared to what in discipline causes me. Okay, the pain of discipline speed limits. You know when you enter express, you just see road like this. Then you look at your speedometer, the thing is just like this. So you throw discipline away. You take off. But then, bah! Two legs broken. Your legs are hanging in orthopedic. The pain of controlling yourself, obeying traffic laws, even though you wanted to get to where you're going fast. That little thing, compared to now, the whole year your legs are hanging on this thing and the pain is dealing with you and then after spending one year at orthopedic, they release you, you are now in wheelchair for the remaining 15 years or you are going to maybe have iron in your body, you can't walk well, you have to use crutches for the remaining 15 years. Compare the thing and tell me if there is comparison. Okay, look at another one. Holiness. Yeah. Without holiness, no eye shall see the Lord. You can't sleep around. You can't drink around. You can't party around. God put some restrictions. Sex should be exercised within marriage. You say you don't want it. You, all these pastors that are just trying to keep us from having fun. I'm a young man or young woman and I all my everything is standing this is the time I can enjoy myself enjoy my body then all of a sudden HIV hits and now it takes away compare it and then there is regret for remaining life because I could have prevented this by just It's just waiting. It's not that you are not going to have the same thing. Or have you within the right context. 
any area you like, compare it. Because you're young now, you can eat anything you like. The disciplines you're committing in your youth with your body comes to knock on your door to look you in the face in the latter years of your life. There's a lady, anytime she cries for me, I've prayed for her because she has heard that I pray for people without womb and they got wombs. But it's only three since I started doing ministry. And she's among the other ones that didn't get 98% that never got. And I prayed for her. Really asked God, give her a new womb. She had a womb. She really did wonders with her body. And I remember preaching to her. Those days she was just anything. Now she's finally married. She's born again. But there's no womb. Initially she tried to have pastor advise her, tell your husband the truth. She was afraid that he might leave. But finally told her, the man is a Christian man. He decided to stay with her. But they keep believing for miracles and all that. Recently the family started giving the man some advice that you have to do something, you know, can't so he's beginning to listen to that. He's kept a guest somewhere, furnish a flat just to have babies for him. He will tell you that he still loves his wife, but he has to have. So she's been, she will come, she will, she will be everything. You try to teach her faith. Forget about what you have done. Jesus has covered her mind will always. He said, Pastor, you don't understand how many babies have killed. And now look at the same me looking for. He said, I get pregnant like water. I just removed it. The same me now is looking for just one. Only thing I'm asking God is one, not even two. Girl or boy, I don't care again. So, like, you have come here. This part of what we are trying to create is artificial pain. Just artificial discomfort. Artificial, you know, because the real thing is that you're going to have to have a system of discipline with you, in you, that will take you through life. The only thing standing between you and the greatness God has shown you is in discipline. The Holy Spirit has been showing you this future. You have been seeing it yourself. What you can be in life. The only thing standing between you is in discipline. Let me get us to think about it this way. We go to church, we hear sermons, we don't practice it. We buy books, we don't read it. You go to your shelf, you see books, and some of the things that are troubling you are inside the pages. We buy tapes, we don't sit down to play it. Then there's another group that won't even buy it. We go in prayer, we make God promises, we won't keep it. We make resolutions during our bad days or New Year's, we won't keep it. If you check the things you're repenting of this year, there are the same things you've been repenting of last year, and there are the same things you've been repenting of last five years. Nothing good comes easy. There is no shortcut to success. Success demands personal discipline. You have to choose whether you want the pain of regret or you pay the price of discipline, which is a small pain compared to what the other one will cost you. The man that is in hell for unholiness he compares it with that small girlfriend, 15 minutes pleasure is collecting that sends him to hell. Can you compare the two? So he, the holiness that will bring a, a little discomfort stay with your wife and eternity in hell. Can he, is there any comparison? No. Because the pleasures of sin are for a season, but they finally fill the man's mouth with gravels. What is the cause of the weakness of the church, the impotency we see in the church today in discipline? 
was the cause of so much disorder and the Pentecostals are worse for it. God comes to church at the time people have set appointment with him. You see people walking in one hour late, two hours late. But when I started dealing with national transformation, it wasn't long. I saw that I needed to go and study protocols. I remember, for example, uh, President Jonathan, one time we invited us to Asso Rock and we, everybody is seated before the president what, walks in. David Cameron was in Lagos. This, is it not this week? Yes, this week. And so he came to speak in Lagos Business School. Came with Fashola, came with um, Sanusi. Everybody is seated. The moment he walks in, it's over. This is a human being like you. And God will come and be waiting for you to come. He says, and we wonder why heaven doesn't take us serious. God said, I will honor them that what? Honor me. Why is it that at this age, some of us are still eating our tight? In discipline. Why do we have so much immorality and unholiness today in discipline? Why is it that there are so many people talking, nothing to show for it? The biggest enemy standing between you and your success is in discipline. I want to put it this way. 80% of your constraints are within only about 20 are without. 80% of the things stopping you are inside. There are attitude problems, character problems, integrity problems, in discipline. Only about 20% can be maybe other people. Somebody doesn't like you or someone likes or this one or this one happened or that one. Only about 20% is circumstantial. But the mystery about environment again is that environment is stronger than the man. Like if you check here, it carries 50% weight. But yet it's the man that controls his environment. That's what the meaning of that statement. Go and have dominion over the earth. What God is saying is that I've created this environment, but I'm giving you power to control it. If you notice, a car is faster than human beings. A car is stronger than us. If you jam, it's the man that will die, not the car. But yet, it's the man that drives that and controls it. An aircraft is far much faster than us. We can't fly, but it can fly. There's so many things it can do. An aircraft can lift 300 of us and take off. Of course, Airbus 380 can carry up to 700 people. They even said if you make all the seats, economy that you can carry 800 and something people. That is more than uh, more than eight luxurious buses. Mm, let me check where. Luxurious buses carry about 50, 55 maximum. 56. So if I use 50 times 8 is what? 400. So it's still, even more than 10 luxurious buses filled with people, it's still 560. One aircraft carries 800. And takes off on air, plus all the bags, and be flying across ocean. Now, as powerful as it is, it's stronger than us. It can do what we cannot do. System is stronger than man. Yet, is man that create and control systems. A gun is stronger than you. Bah! The man falls down; is dead. You can't use hand to collect the bullet. Yet, who controls the gun? Who pulls the trigger? So, what is really the most dangerous person on earth? Is he the gun or atomic bomb? It's not an atomic bomb, it's man. Who created the atomic bomb? Who will detonate it? So, that's why when you see war, the evil thing we are trying to control is not bomb, it's human beings. It's human beings. Evil, amen is the problem of this world. The evil in man. The evil in man 
is the problem we have in this world. Write this statement down. Without discipline, you are going nowhere. No matter how much knowledge you have in your head. Let me mention some types of indiscipline. Just some. Dirtiness. Dirtiness. Number two, laziness. Number three, mental laziness. You won't read. You won't study. You won't play things. You won't go for training. Mental laziness. Number four, lateness. Number five, talkativeness. Number six, prayerlessness. Number seven, planlessness. Just rush out. Can't sit down to plan, to set goals. Sit down to think. Think through something. I don't know what the number is. I'll just keep listening. Carelessness. Number seven, lawlessness. I think it's probably number nine or eight. Lawlessness. Number 10, disorderliness. Right now, the environment for training has been created here. I see it. Yesterday, it was a battle just to produce this place of order that we're enjoying now. People will play their food. People will be walking up and down. Just an environment is stronger. That thing hinders 50% of what we needed to accomplish. We're in the same room, but we have created a different environment for learning. By introducing order. Quarrelsomeness. There are people like that. That's their own. Wahala. People. If you love them, you're in trouble. You hate them, you're in more trouble. Recklessness. Another one. Looseness. And they are believers like that. Very loose. Don't have comportment in their life. It's a girl that is, and you can be raising a child, and you start noticing that tendency. You have to curtail it on time. Not when she comes back with pregnancy before you see it. Then lewdness, lewdness. Some people has an aspect of it that is seductiveness. Some aspect of it is you see some people wear this. Do lo and behold and be showing these things, the teachings of the Bible are against it. We need to restore the sword. Let's talk about some other aspects of indiscipline. You know, I've talked about talkativeness, but there is gossiping. Then there is backbiting. There is immorality. And then I'm going to say this one and I want you to circulate. Procrastination. The reason many people have not seen the dream, they keep pushing it away. Pushing tomorrow what can be done today. Then there is stealing. And all his brothers, including Tapit, you take what is not yours. You did not get the permission of the owner. And then after, he stays with you. You may not be an armed robber who will use gun, but you are his brother. There is rebellion. Anywhere there is discipline, there is submission, there is orderliness, and there is seriousness. Take note of those three things. Anywhere there is discipline, the first thing you see is orderliness. Second thing is submissiveness. Third is seriousness. There is gravity. People cannot take you serious. That's why Africa is the way we see the way we are. See the way we are. Anywhere there is discipline, you will not find lawlessness. You find orderliness. Let's mention some other aspect like fantasizing. 
is part of mental indiscipline. Somebody that should be using his mind to create his future. Imagine, to dream, to visualize his goals. Use his mind to meditate and plan out. He's using his own to fantasize on somebody's wife that you are sleeping. All kinds of crazy nonsense. Let's mention some areas of indiscipline. Lack of exercise. Lack of integrity. Lack of loyalty. You don't keep covenant. You don't stand there. You are in a relationship. The person can't know whether you are there or not. You, you, next thing, you have abandoned the person. You know, relationship is not a prison. You leave relationship because the relationship is actually a corrupting influence on your life. Instead of, that's a different thing. You know, evil communication corrupt that part. But loyalty, ability to keep covenant, to keep trust. You should go to the grave with people's secrets and nobody will hear it. Just like we tell God all type all type of things and nobody hears it. That's how you should be. Lack of accountability. Nobody can talk to you. Lack of savings. Living above your means. That's one of the highest form of indiscipline. Write it down. Living beyond your means. That you can't buy something today doesn't mean you can't have it tomorrow. Just because somebody has, you go and push yourself beyond reckless spending. Recklessness in spending. Lack of manners. Lack of consistency. You start things. Recycle it all. You start things, but you abandon it. You won't finish it. There are some of us. That's what is hindering our own progress. So it's not that we don't start things. We always get gingered up. We'll start. We leave it halfway. After the year end, we look. We have not made progress. We don't have the consistency, the persistence to finish projects or things in, that we initiated. Lack of cooperation. Some people, it's only them. But when there is need to work with a team, they lack the ability to. They don't know how to work with others. So they become lone rangers in life and that is one of the laws of failure because you can't build your dream alone. You can't build your future alone. Lack of submission. Lack of self-control. Let's mention some more areas of indiscipline. Because you can just say indiscipline and people won't know where they are getting. Overeating. Bible has a word for it. It's called gluttony. Bible also talks about over drinking. It has a word for it. Drunkenness. Now that doesn't mean I'm telling you to be drinking alcohol. But even if it's Coca-Cola, or anything that is done in excess is bad. Oversleeping. Overspending. Overreaction. Some people are so sentimental. Small thing, they will take it. And the damage, it could be a relationship that will, like say, a major thing, they damage that thing. Overindulgence. And I'm going to mention this one. I want you to circle it. One of the highest form of indiscipline is irresponsibility. You blame every other person. You blame your uncle for your failure. You blame the devil. You blame, but you never take responsibility. The truth is that 80% of your constraints are within they are not without. If you take care of that 80 within, you will succeed. Even if you don't change the 20 without. Mm-hmm. 
Self-discipline begins with the ability to manage time. I'm going to give you 12 laws of discipline now. Maybe in another session I'll show you how to build a system of discipline to support your character. So you don't just make resolves. You, you have a system that backs it up. Enables you. You become the person you have always wanted to be. Let me mention these three components of discipline. Number one, self-control. Number two, self-abasement. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in the heart. And you will find rest for your soul. There are certain aspects of discipline that self-abasement takes care of. All this rebellion, all this, some other things, egocentrism. You know, just having the right estimation of yourself, not having overestimated version of you. It just takes care of it. Humility, meekness. Meekness means you make, you make yourself teachable, moldable, correctable. People can speak to you. It takes care of a lot of things. When you have this bleeding emotion, any little thing you there, because you know nobody can talk to you. You have this overbloated ego. You will be a highly disciplined person. Self abasement. So you see, discipline is not just about self control. Meekness is power under restraint. Power under control. The third is self-renunciation. This one balances excessive ambition, excessive appetite, because there is discipline even in your appetite. Not that people don't have vision. Self-control, self-abasement, and self-renunciation. It takes care of selfishness. The third one. The greatest enemy of discipline is self or the flesh. Overpampered flesh. Overbloated ego. Self-centeredness. Selfishness. Self-indulgence. Selfish ambition. When it's self, 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 self. Let me, I think I need to say this. Discipline is the ability to conduct oneself well. There are a number of definitions. Discipline is the ability to follow rules and order. Discipline is also the ability to follow system and processes. Things that are systematic to follow through how it goes. Like a stop at the traffic light. When it turns, whatever, you continue moving. And discipline will tell you, Pow, go on. And then you might go that day and escape. Another day as you do, a car is coming the other way, you hear, bah, accident. Or another day, it might be a policeman, they catch you. Then that time you think you are saving, they'll carry you to station, you burn the whole day, by the time you finish paying, plus the money you waste and all that, you tell me which one, waiting for that two minutes or three minutes, and then this whole whatever you have wasted the whole day. Discipline, self discipline is the ability to regulate oneself, the ability to control your thoughts, words, and action. Discipline is also the ability to submit to constituted authorities. And it's not just government or police, everywhere in the family. Marriage, husband, in the family, parents, in the society, police, traffic laws, in the classroom, teachers, in the church, pastors, and all of church. Everywhere there is law, there is authority everywhere. You don't like authority. You have to get out of this world because it's everywhere. You get inside the aircraft, the air hostesses, they tell you, put on your seatbelt. You say, who is that small guy to talk? Tell me what to do. They will have to tell you what to do unless you want to get out of that flight. They, you know, put on, switch off your 
discipline means you follow order. You for anywhere you get, find you get to hospital, the doctor. If you like, be president. Of, when you get there, forget your uh, abuja or whatever you are and follow the procedures. Anywhere you are, there is order. A disciplined person appreciates order because they know the importance of it. It multiplies the productivity of both individuals and communities. Discipline is also the ability to follow through on a project to stay with something till you succeed or you finish it. That thing about abandoning things halfway or starting things, not finishing it, is in discipline. Anywhere there is no dis- there is discipline. Anywhere there is discipline, there is no limitation. There is no mountain that cannot be conquered. There is no problem that cannot be solved. What people need is discipline to remain consistent. Consistency in application of knowledge. What they have learned and they will get the results. It's like here now you have learned things. It's what you now do with it that will decide. A few years from now you see people who are actually living revelation, living examples of what they have learned here. You see them achieving result, producing. Then you see some other people, they will look like they didn't attend this kind of training. It will be like they didn't get this knowledge. But they did. What is the problem? Mm -hmm. The discipline of execution. Let me mention the types of discipline, for example. There is moral discipline. That has to do with the character. Like issues about holiness. Like issues about not running around with women. There are all kinds of things involved in that. Issues about integrity. Issues about not taking what does not belong to you. Moral discipline. There is the discipline of execution. This is the discipline of taking action. Being a person of initiative, not just sit down and be dreaming dreams and be living in a world of fantasy, realizing that until action is taken, dreams will never become a reality. It's also the, the, the there is a discipline of follow through, not just follow up, follow through to start something and see that thing to its logical conclusion. There is spiritual discipline, like prayer life, like fasting, like your devotion. Morning devotion. And if you miss it in the morning, maybe let's assume you have to rush out and you create a time in the day to balance it. There is marital discipline, like submission, like not harassing your wife in the presence of a third party or your husband. And so on and so forth. Like respecting the boundaries of your marriage. When you're a married person, stop behaving like you're still a single. Carry girls around anyhow. Even if you're not doing anything, you're creating problem. You're living on a disciplined life. Discipline imposes boundaries and restrictions. But which one do you prefer? The pain of indiscipline or the restrictions that discipline imposes? which is only two grand, it pays you so much than that lawless life that calms your destiny. Any liberty without limitation is bondage. Write it down. Any form of freedom without restriction equals to bondage. It produces back bondage. No matter what it is, like you look at your sexual liberty. Look at, you can decide to now do whatever you like with it. It will finally put you. And you know, when the pain of regret comes, it, it takes all the rights away. For example, a man that will not control his appetite, keep, you know, uh, eating, and now he now has diabetes. You know what the, the doctors finally said? You can't eat sugar at all. He could have been eating it, but eat it in moderation. But now he is bound for eating it at all. The one that 
maybe it's over speeding and he will obey traffic law or just keep now they say you can't even drive at all because your spine is this or your leg is they can only carry you it takes away the liberty completely when you exercise liberty without restraint the one that will not lend discipline to any decent living he carries gone when they finally catch him they incarcerate him in prison where he's not even allowed to now go wherever he likes they've removed his liberty from him there is mental discipline i don't know if i've mentioned that mental discipline studying planning meditation thinking through things Part of mental discipline. Whenever you are fatigued or stressed, don't make a very critical decision. Tell the person, give me tea the next day. Go on, go on. After you have slept and your mind has calmed down. Uh-huh. Because that's when you make decisions that you regret later. Mental discipline. Don't have time to be feeding nonsense into your brain. Pornography and all kinds of things. Because garbage in will bring out what? Little garbage. There's physical discipline. Exercise. Dieting, things that have to do with your health. There is vocational discipline, like punctuality to work, like hard work, like excellence in the workplace. You do your job well, it produces promotion. Part of vocational discipline is continuous improvement, going for trainings. There is financial discipline, like tightening. But beyond tightening, what about savings? Minimum of at least 10% of what you earn should be saved. And if you are practicing just 10%, it shows you are not yet, you are still a beginner in financial discipline. Financial discipline. Living, living below your means. When you can't afford something, cut your appetite. Trust God till the time he makes the provision. Now you go and start buying things, borrowing. See some people, they will borrow clothes to go for wedding. Who are you trying to impress? To attend the function. Frugality. These are the things that make the Jews worthy. There is emotional discipline. Controlling your anger. Stop nagging. And you are nagging your husband or nagging your wife. One thing that happened how many years ago, you asked every time. People will not rest for you. Exercise your frustration on other people. Control your emotion. Then there is aspect of controlling your passion. All these your sexual hormones that are running. Control that thing. Put it under. Put the scripture for me. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-seven. Start from verse twenty-five. First Corinthians chapter 9. Every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. That word temperate is, means disciplined. Anybody that wants to be successful or win a competition or become outstanding. This is the key to outstanding success. Is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Like the man that becomes Olympic champion. The man that becomes boxing champion. The man that becomes, you know, world champions in football. And those people, they wake up four a.m. They have to run around the field. Then they start practicing. They have to practice goal kick so many times. Hundreds of times to be able to become perfect. So that that day, the whole world is watching you. Stadium is filled. You do it, you get it. It's not guesswork. It's a pro- product of practice, practice, practice. It's not just those hands they hold and do prayer. It's when you have cultivated discipline, you have cultivated, mastered your arts. You now pray. Grace will join you in it. You outperform everybody. I therefore so run not as uncertainly. So I fight not as one that beats the air. Look at verse 20. But I keep my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I put my body under subjection. Physical discipline. I control my appetite. Then there is verbal discipline. Controlling your words. 
using sound words, avoiding lying, avoiding backbiting, avoiding gossiping, stay away from character assassination. Even if your profession is making joke, you can be the type of comedian you make people laugh, but yet nobody can say you corrupted this child. People can bring children to your comedies and the family will be. Some people, they are so vulgar and filthy with their mouth. Learn how to talk to people. There is social discipline. You know, like manners and other. You are not living alone in this world. You are interacting with other people. In a culture, in a society, in church. In... So, there are etiquettes. There are things that are acceptable way of behavior. And there are boundaries in relationship. You have to learn what some of this is. Some people don't know. Because somebody just made you his friend. Next time you are arriving in his house, you don't walk to the kitchen, open food and say, hey, the degree of liberty you have with people, you have to be sure they are giving it to you. There are people that don't know anything about boundaries. And that's how that door closes. Another person might do it because that's the level of whatever he has with that person. It doesn't mean you should do it. Even relationship grows. There are things like trust, for example. You don't violate such things. You know, they are, they are recreational discipline. Be careful, especially with things like internet. Use the internet, but block off nonsense. TV, you know, movies. Find what is healthy for you. If you search, you will find them. You know, they are still there. Even though people say, uh, we don't have good movies anymore. Then there is also the issue about disciplining your time. Discipline in the area of time. Uh, you know, look, uh, when I study examples in this phone, Jesus who woke up very early in the morning, up to three hours before other people wake up, like Mark chapter 1, verse 35, to go and have his devotion. And he will live where he slept because the flesh will want to sleep off if you lie around the bed. If you know that it doesn't work for you, find. And some will get up, kneel beside the bed and put their head on the bed and sleep off there again. You have, you have to, you know, this flesh, this flesh. This. <laughs> so I look at someone like Paul. Paul was a man of, and that one is something else. You know, but, but this guy, I always think about him, Webster. You have the Webster dictionary. This guy, it took him 36 years to write that book. Some of us have abandoned it halfway discipline. But that work he has produced, the man has come and gone home. His children, till this world is destroyed, that dictionary will keep selling. It took Moses 40 days, which is five weeks, five days, sitting in the presence of God to get Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those five books, but those five books, those five books, you, you hope you know the Bible is the that book that have sold money, another book in this world in this world. If Moses wanted to make money, and maybe he patented the first five books. I don't know whether trillion is enough to measure the world because a book that has been selling for since four thousand years until today is still selling more than any other book in the world. But it took consistency and discipline of five and a half weeks to produce. John Adams. No, not John Adams. Adam Clark. John Adams was also very critical in framing the, the, the Declaration of Independence and the American Constitution. It took weeks of work. But the Constitution that gave America 300 years of stable democracy. Now, John Clark, Adam Clark, wrote three volumes of the Bible. It took him 40 years. In those days, you have to copy, write the whole Bible with hand. No, no printing press. To finish one Bible or just one copy. And then kings and powerful people, they are the only ones who can afford it, started ordering. It took 40 years. Translate it in this. 
there are things God has put in your hand that has been abandoned. But you still claim things in church, claim it in the spirit. <laughs> All good things do not come easy. So, honorable, you know. Yeah, there is one thing very interesting you said yesterday. And um, it's very amazing that um, a lot of us, you know, talk about um, forming political parties and uh, all this. And then you made us to understand that we should learn from those who are masters. Take, for example, PDP. I, I was in opposition for a very long time, very, very long time. And uh, I, I think this course, this school, this university that we are today has taught me uh, a very great lesson. Indeed, um, I think it is interesting to know that um, today we can do so many things with that party. We can do so many things with that party. And um, it is also very necessary for us to know that what you said about... um, about doing everything. God created everything and made it available for us. It is so interesting that um, we think God, God will come down from heaven to do everything for us. But we came to understand, or I understand that God has made it very, very easy. I take example of somebody like Konjo Iwala. It is her hard work. It is her hard work that has brought him up to this country several times. Even when a group of people gathered together to protest for her coming back, the present government still wanted him because of hard work, because of discipline, because of character. And uh, there is no way you can put him at the background. So we discovered that most of our failures, indeed, is as a result of hard work. Hard work. We don't work hard. We are very lazy. We, don't, we value our, our rest more than the work we should do. We are not disciplined. We are not disciplined in every aspect of life. Honestly, we are not disciplined. In and, the church. And he said, a man, he's been a party chairman, I think once or twice at state level. If he tells you just the amount of work required to run an election, if you see the amount of doctoral meetings, and not just to run an election, even when you have become, you have won. Do you know that there was a, a strike that was supposed to happen this week? He took night meeting because the man was in Lagos having meetings with uh, uh, the British Prime Minister that came. He took night, last minute interventions, the National uh, Assembly and some other, but night meetings. A lot of, if you see what it is, for those of us who love sleep too much, but you see carry a vision that one day God is going to use you to govern a state and other. You don't know what, ask him what is involved. Pastor, I was robbed of the primary simply because of loyalty and somebody else who was not spending any money got connected and was servicing the relationship and the nomination was given to him at the platter of gold and then I came to understand that loyalty is also very very important very very Very, very important. important If you are in a system and, and then you, you try to neglect the powers that be, you can get what you want and, do, and use it to do those things that we are teaching. But first of all, be lawyer. Be lawyer. Be, be, be very close to them and get it. It is not necessary to start doing like this when you are not there already. Thank you, sir. You know, those of you who have... Clap, clap. This is a good place to clap. 
let me give you two examples. Jesus was sent here to overhaul Judaism. He saw a lot of problems in that system. But he first went and understudied it for 30 years, joined them, and was doing the whole thing in the, in the temple. And they trained him till they made him a rabbi and gave him that small cap. It took 18 years to get that cap for him. When he now got it, uh-huh, he had the authority to speak to their highest caliber. Let me give you another example. Moses was going to fight a whole government of Egypt and bring three million people that were slaves in it. You know what he did? He joined it first. God arranged his birth that they took him inside the palace. He grew in the power corridor. Befriended his best friend was the one that finally became the, the, the pharaoh. Remesis was his childhood friend. They were playing together. Are you seeing like, the power of the relationship you are talking about? God did not try for Moses to attempt anything when Remesis father because they would cut off his head. He waited till his friend is now the pharaoh in charge. He now told him, return back because those that seek your life are dead. The other pharaoh. The, your young friend is the one that is now the new president. Return back and tell him, thus said the Lord, let my people go. You see why? Remesis will get angry sometimes, but he never made an attempt to kill Moses. Sometimes he will, he will tell Moses, get out of my sight. Moses will go. When plague started, he will call him and say, beg your God. <laughs> now, the, even the power to negotiate, to be able to come, assess our so rock anyhow, God needed, because is there anybody that you can say, go and tell Jonathan, where will you enter that place from? <laughs> you trek, you get to Asok, you say in the field, he says, soldiers, the Lord has sent me to the president. You know what they will do to you? There's a group of students, UNN students, that fell just in the last few years of Zeke, that they have a message for him that he should repent. And they got up after praying. They went to his own year and he was there and went to the gate. And the security man said, who are you? Who are you looking for? He said, we want to see the well of furniture. He said, why do you want to see him? He said, we have a message from God. God said we should come to tell him. They get, when they finish beating them, if you see how they... They said, the Lord will judge you. They get a used gun and give them for that. <laughs> have you seen how God To position Joseph to be the one that will help Pharaoh, he, he put him in a position first where he built relationship with two of the closest advisors of the man. And it was when those guys went to prison. So that prison detour was just to enable a man a whole two years to build a strategic relationship. Meanwhile, the man saw it as uh, he just delayed my progress. But God knew that there's no way, no amount of magic will just carry him there and put him there. That it is relationship that will strategically take him to that place. And God did not care in all these relationships, whether it's Potiphar or Pharaoh or Nebuchadnezzar, whether they are saved or not. They were even, some of them were even declaring themselves God. They were all occult men, but he didn't care. He brings his man to grab what he's grabbing because human beings are leverages. Let me also say this. There are two principalities that govern this world. The third is irrelevant if you master these two. First is the principal called God. Second is the second principal called man. If you handle this too well, you don't have to bow to the third, which is Satan. You can succeed. You know what we see in Pentecost? I don't need any man. It's only God that I need. You will suffer in this earth. When you finish, you will learn. Just like you have spiritual principles and natural principles, you have spiritual principal God. If you master relationship with him, you don't need Satan. Here, you have natural principal. Every place you enter on earth, somebody is in charge. Anything God is going to do for you here, He's going to use somebody. You use somebody to parent you. Did you fall from heaven? You use somebody to bring you here. Somebody carried you nine months in his womb. 
Somebody paid your school fee. Somebody everywhere. Somebody is your teacher in school. Somebody is your pastor in church. Somebody is your this. Somebody is that. If you play with that principle, you're going to have problem, major problem in life. That is why the Ten Commandments is broken into two. One tablet contains how to relate with the unseen principle. The other tablet relates with how to manage the same principle. If you manage the two, you have success here. Jesus put it this way, that managing successful relationship with your maker and managing relationship with your neighbor is what it takes to succeed here. So, somebody saying, I don't need anybody. Thank you. Let the banker say it now. Let the whole customer depart and then I will see how the bank fails. Who will pay the bill? It's the customer that pays all those salaries. Oh. It's not your boss that pays your salary. It's not your boss that pays your salary. It's the customers, the depositors, and all the, it, you know, that actually sustain that institution. Stop saying you don't need anybody. You need somebody. You need strategic relationships. You need prophetic relationships. I was teaching our pastors in Lagos. I said, for example, this honor, honor that we give in ministry. Listen, it's not just so that God can bless you. Because the truth is that in any institution you enter, target the favor of the most powerful in it if you have sense. This is why when you hear Adelijah, if I walk in there now, they clear everybody to see me. I'm the only person except pro that if I come to Ukraine, he give me personal car. Give me personal driver. I said to him one day, why are you doing this? He said, I come to that your country, Nigeria. I preach and preach. They don't know simply how to appreciate. In the time when he was going through the crisis, they were trying to arrest him. I made sure that. So I come to Ukraine. They give me car. They give me driver. He said, we will follow me to Domino City chapters to go and make... He says, send all the men. I'll show them all my secrets. And that's what he's doing. You think he's just uh, because God is blessed. No. Because giving to is the key to favor with people. To have power with people. Is that not what happens even in political setting? That 7 million he was using to run an election. Just 500,000, 1 million out of it. Could have given him leverage with strategic people. Whatever it could be the gift or whatever. It could be, you know, it could be birthday. It could be relationships are nurtured. And there is exchange in nurturing it. Because whether you like it or not, there are many of these decisions that they sit around in the table. They decide who is going. Now, I know we are building a system in Nigeria until we get to, to that place where it's perfected. After all, how did Joseph become prime minister? Was it by vote? Was there not one man that put in there? What's his name? Pharaoh. How did Daniel become prime minister in Babylon? Was he by vote? Was there not one man that put in there? What's his name? Nebuchadnezzar. So, what is your business? You see, that's why we talk principle. Principle of relationship. Principle of networking. Principle of strategic alliances. Those things are very critical. Jonathan, yes. Go ahead. Even Jonathan Oman. Okay, it's true. Because Obama made him vice president and he became president. And even till now, he supported him till he captured this last one. Are we still on track? Eh? <laughs> anyway, I listed areas of discipline. Let me just list in case discipline in your words. Discipline in time, discipline in finances, discipline in your appetite, your taste, discipline in emotions, discipline in thoughts, discipline in behavior, discipline in your thoughts, discipline in your studying, discipline in prayer, discipline in your vocation, in your work, discipline in relationships, discipline in recreation, even discipline in driving. Discipline in planning, even discipline in parenting. Why you are t telling your children to l behave well? Make sure that you are also showing the right example. Because the children will do the one they see you doing, more than the one you are telling them to do. You know, 
discipline in exercise of authority as you grow and you are gaining more authority he said a wise person exercises it not more than 20 percent of the authority he has when you are given authority make sure in exercise of it don't go beyond 20 percent of it he said the less of power you exercise the more of it you have when you are giving power, ah, you know, like policemen, because you have God, soon now they will put you behind back because you shoot somebody with that thing. So when you are placed over people, exercise also restraints in the. There are pastors who just curse people because they have spiritual power. Yes, yes, I know. There's a minister I know had a growing church of a thousand there, but he kept cursing. He cursed his wife, cursed all his children, cursed all the pastors in the church. And he, if you see the curses he lays, they are terrific. He started cursing members. Finally, the church reduced to 150. When I heard it, it's just cost managing people because the congregation is internal customers. The ones that are here to win are the external customers, managing the two. But he uses cursing too. <laughs> Bible says we have to bless and not curse. You know? <laughs> Discipline of retreats. One of the things we're expecting for you now, every month now, a minimum of two days, you pull it out, stay away from phone, TV, internet, go on personal retreats. If you do what I'm telling you, if you see where you will become, take the books, take the tapes, take notes of the things you want. Each time you go, have a specific thing. For example, there are different types of fasting. Apart from uh, dry fast, partial fast, and normal fast, those three that people normally talk about, there are different types of, there is wisdom fast. Where I know that this is where I'm lacking. So you take books on wisdom, materials, tapes, and all. You go for this whole period. It's only this I'm working on. And you are praying and you are listening. Not just you go. It's not all this retreat that is only prayer. You have to take materials to study. But you clear all kinds of destruction. Don't go with your wife. Don't go with children. Put them under two days. You will not die. Practice this on a monthly basis. Find two days. A giant will emerge out of you. you. If you see the things, you'll be developing. Some of these books you've been trying to write that you have not finished for eternity. If you see some of the things you are trying to work on, the kind of things that will be happening to you, these are my secrets. A man produced five books, Genesis 2, that is still for 4,000 years just because of a few weeks of retreat. What if you create that kind of discipline in your life? What will happen to you? So that you that period you take down to plan to because there are some of you that are going to build companies, that are going to build things, but developing of processes and fleshing out a plan, it's not a it's not a joke. Oh. Planning is a skill, but it's also a discipline. Discipline of exercise, discipline in traveling. Like anybody who wants to be a pastor, you have to curtail traveling. It's one of the areas of discipline that affects church growth. And when you travel, you make up your mind that you must return to your base on Sundays. If you want a church to grow, the people need to see the pastor on Sundays. The leaders can afford not to see you because they are the ones you spend extra time and do training for. But the normal congregation that come, it's not a matter of telling them, don't mind, God is God that you're coming to see. They want to see the man of God. <laughs> Did you see when Moses overstayed on that mountain? The people didn't see him. What happened? They made a golden calf. No, you know, some people want to copy me. Pastor is doing national transformation. You, you should have built your ministry to that level before you can start jumping up and down. You will kill. At the end of the day, you will be empty-handed. It takes a minimum of three years of concentration to produce a stable church. If you miss your Sunday service, don't miss more than a month in a year. You know what I mean? Four times. And it should not be consecutive. Or that is rules. These are principles of pastoring. It's different from an evangelist. 
somebody who does programs. But I'm not talking to PCG, I'm talking to you because you're going to pastor something. You're going to pastor satellite church. You're going to pastor NGO. You're going to pastor something. That thing requires consistency. Okay, three keys to discipline. Number one is to make concrete resolutions. I have always said it, you may have heard me say, whenever you get a revelation, make a commitment to match. When you learn something, at that point, you should make some decisions, concrete decisions. So this is how I take notes when I sit in seminars and anything. I turn my notebook from the front page. I take my notes from there and be coming. Then I go to the back and I write decisions. I write the topic I'm listening to and key decisions. So I keep taking the note because in the course of listening, some things are hitting by inspiration. When it hits me, I go there. I must do this, 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 this. I'm go- when I leave the conference, I, the decisions are the first thing I go to revisit, not even the notes. Because they are the concrete things. So don't just take notes. Make PowerPoints, key things you want to do as a result of what you are learning. Because it is that discipline of doing, of execution, that separates people from others. Those who become champions from those who just learned. So concrete decisions. You want to change certain areas of your life. You have to make the decisions. Some of you, God has stopped and um, preaching or teaching now. He's telling you or your spirit is ignited. Create a page where you are writing those things. After you have to go and sit down with them and now you set goals. Build a system that will enable you to do it. Number two, you don't just make resolutions. You build restraints. You make concrete restraints. What do we mean by that? Put some limitations on your life. Put some restrictions in your life. I've told you that liberty without restriction equals back to bondage. Put some restrictions on your life. Don't wait for somebody to do it. Create rules for yourself. Set boundaries for yourself. If not, your potential has wasted away. Do you know that all this AC is producing cooling here? That if you remove these boundaries, these walls now, their effect is neutralized. Every potential without boundary is completely neutralized. Even in ministry, you can't help everybody. I have got invitations this week to last for the next three years, every week. Of all those invitations... Because I did a conference for African pastors from every country. Of all those invitations, it's only one that I took. Because that one related with the assignment we are given. Only one. It takes a lot of discipline. If not, you just take off. I invite you to this, invite you to this, invite you to this. You'll be going. Mm-mm. I have an assignment. I'm not called to do it. I look for the things that relate to it. And so concrete restraints. The last is systems. Concrete systems. A plan of action. You don't just make decisions. A plan of action. How you are going to execute this thing. And even with time. When you are going to start. I've said this monthly retreats now. Every month take two days and go. Even the person that is practicing just one day, he goes, takes away from family, wife, children, switches his phone, and practices a whole 24 hours with God, with materials, with books. He's better than the one that is not doing at all. Over a long time, he's going to achieve tremendous results. There are all kinds of fast. There is wisdom fast. There is power fast. If you notice that anointing is your problem, go on fast, focusing on that. Take books by, you know, on, on the Holy Spirit, on Good morning, Holy Spirit, and other things, Catherine Kuma, things that will relate to that. There is, you can fast on authority. You go this week, it's authority, this authority, of the, they've been teaching it in the air. Like, why is it that when I'm rebuking demons that are coming, you go there, anything you give attention becomes powerful in you. After a while, you become an authority in that place. There is, you know, character fast. Where I go, this is my problem of talkativeness. I have repented, but it doesn't seem to. I'm going to work on it now. 
and you set goals. Even now, I've gone on retreat for two days. Then you set goals, restrain on your tongue over a period of time. And we'll show you how to do it. We'll show you. It's one of the exercises. One of the exercises. So you make laws for yourself and create a way to enforce the laws. For example, Pastor Sarah used to like ice cream a lot. So I put something I said, there's no problem with this ice cream thing, but just any time you put a spoon in the mouth, 30 minutes in the gym. So after a while, ice cream stopped becoming a problem. So each time you put, you go. You put, you go. So put restraints, put laws for yourself, and put rewards and, and, and punishment. For example, TV for me is when I've accomplished the work of the day, I can now get an hour or two good. What? I have not achieved what I'm doing for that day. What is my business? Buy newspaper for me, I will get the news or whatever is happening. Interesting program, let it wait. You have to have ways of, you know, um, doing this. Thing. And when you notice that you have done well in a season, reward yourself. That's part of it. Don't wait till you achieve your whole life goal before you know you've done something. Amen. There are 12 laws of discipline. I don't know if you can take that. I think... You want to take it? Eh? There are 12 principles of discipline. Okay, let's do it fast. I will, I will see if we can, you know. Yes, it's part of mental discipline to stretch your mind. But before I give it to you, let's relax you a little before you start writing OP. <laughs> Let me get some commentaries on the one you have, you have had. Get me Mike. Who wants to comment on the, this discipline issue? Have you gained anything on that? Somebody wants to, you know. Sir, I have a, a concern and I want to understand it a little further. And then borrowing my, my own personal um, experiences or, or example. Um, I, I lost my mom quite early in life and then uh, my father followed suit some sometime later, and that there were five of us, all girls. But the little time we had with them, there were certain um, disciplines that they instilled, which for us was a non-issue. For instance, you wouldn't come back from school with anybody's pain. You'll be sent back to the school to go and return it wherever you came from. So we were able to just stay together and grow. But now I have begun, I've been working with a lot of young people for the past two years now, trying to provide mentorship based on my personal experiences. Well, it doesn't seem to be working out as well as I expect. I'm wondering whether it's a function of the society we live in now. Because, for instance, I teach them about self-reliance. A lot of them want handouts. I was there, I told them about no more handouts. You can actually do things to help your, yourself, but they don't want. They want the easy way out. Whatever handouts you can give, whatever you can. So it's, I just want you to explain if sometimes the affection of the time we live in has something to do with even the discipline we are talking about. Look at the most powerful thing in any training is what? Environment. So the trainer that wants to be effective with people must have to build a system that helps him control this. This is what is neutralizing the quality of education. The prevailing culture. Let me show you the environment of the last days where you are doing ministry, where you are running education, where you are running your mentorship program. You want to know? First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is the prevailing atmosphere on earth right now. So, your ministry is being nurtured in an environment that is antagonistic to values. It's more acceptable to sleep around, to look for easy way out, not to pay price for something than some of these things you are teaching. So, the way to do it, if you watch some of the things I've done with you here, is that you must show the people the end 
the reason for all these hassles, the disturbance you're giving them, if you show them a compelling vision, how they're going to have an advantage over others, a better future for them, eh? you said the only price is this process. They will bend down to follow it. That's one of the ways that God the Father was able to get Jesus to pay all that price he paid. He showed him the glory that will follow. And that's what he's enjoying today. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. The whole world is coming, believing his name. He showed it to him. He said, but it will cost you dying. It will cost you all this. It will cost you being in the form of a servant. So if people do not see the end, they will yield to the process. The only reason, like I yesterday I was talking about circumcision coming, his blood will flow. The only reason a patient will come and sign that form is because he knows that health. He's going to live longer. He's going to regain this pain that is troubling him will not stop. That's why they stayed. That's why you two stayed here. Not because you like discipline. But you have weighed how this thing will help you. So if you don't show people that, you don't get cooperation. Second thing I do because I work with the youth and that's how. After I've shown them, they now start saying, yeah, I want to go. I get their permission. They have to give me permission to discipline them. Realizing that what I'm doing is for their good. You know, the coach comes and says, get up. It's time for exercise. He says, oh, somebody cannot sleep. What is this in every 4 a.m.? In my house, I sleep till 8. The man said, are you still interested in being playing a World Cup? Or not? He said, I'm interested. He said, this is the price. Okay. You now go. That's when you relax. Okay, this thing is how the Mar- Maradona, the Peles got there. Okay, if it's that, no problem. Not because the flesh likes it, but because that there is no other road to success. There is no shortcut. All those ones that are cutting corners, you will see now. So look at the environment. Know this that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. You see, greed boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. So this disobedient to authority is the atmosphere now. Unthankful. If you need laboring for them, what did, I tell you? what did you even contribute to me? Say because I, you know, unholy. So immorality, all those things, is the atmosphere. Jesus said it's a perverse and adulterous generation. They didn't see anything wrong with doing whatever. You know, verse 3. Without natural affection. You tell a girl, I love you. You think he's a human being. He doesn't have any. He just want to sleep with her. Trust breakers. They don't keep covenant. Promise you the next time they do. And false accusers. Incontinent fears. Despisers of those that are good. They say, you're a virgin. They start mocking you. When they finish, you feel stupid for doing what is right. Say integrity. Look at money before you. You are saying integrity. Be here and die. Environment is stronger than character. That's why God has taught those who are kingdom people, you have to, we will talk about system. You have to build whatever that sustain your, and part of it is create your own association, your own social network. Find people of like passion and build. You reinforce each other's conviction. If you don't, if Daniel, to where Daniel survived in Babylon is that he, that Meshach, Shedrach, he made those ones his friends. So even though they were only four, they were reinforced there yeah, and they were able to survive the whole society of corruption. When Joseph got to Egypt and found that he was alone, you know what he did? The Bible said he taught Pharaoh's senators wisdom and bound his princes with chains. What he did is that he started a training school, a leadership school to breed people that have his own kind of. And with that, he built a company. If not, you can't reform a society like that. One man cannot do it. Opposition will come against you from everywhere. So he built a crop of men in Egypt and they helped him. But later, later, the Jews also came and joined him there. And so he got other helping hands. Don't go alone, no. Uh, you don't have environment will fight you because there are people in that system that will resist what you're trying to do. 
false accusers, incontifiers, despisers of the traitors, you see, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure. They like sleep, to watch TV, to sleep around, to have sex, to drink, to smoke, more than lovers of God. And he continues. Having a form of God in it. They like gospel song. They like going to church. But they deny the power of it. From such turn away. And I've noticed that the power they deny, especially, is the transforming power of the gospel. They don't mind the motivational side and all that, but to have a life change that matches. You people are blessed in Domino City. You are really blessed. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know if you have. If you, because I mean, I speak to pastors, I travel. I, if you see what is going on, if you see what is going on. But there's a course we do here, we call it the rules of reformation. The seven rules of reformation. One of them states that if you want to stand out in any generation, find the values that have been dropped. Make it a pivotal point of your ministry or whatever institution you are doing, it will stand you out. You become like a Daniel or a Joseph. You become a light. And whenever the powers that be are looking for solutions, they will come and spot you. That's one of the things about the well. Her skill that she has developed, excellence in plus her character. That's why. It's not because they like her. So whenever the king starts looking for someone that would, he go, Daniel. He's not a Christian, but he knows that this one has the thing. In any generation, find the values that they've dropped. Every new thing is something old that the society forgot. Yes, that's one of the laws of reformation. That's why we stand out. The people, our, our movement, the Adelajas and all, we stand out all over the world because we are not preaching the current trend. We are going against the trend. And so, it, 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 because this is what the whole body, body of Christ has lost. Every new thing, there is nothing new. Every new thing is something old that people have forgotten. What reformers do is that they go and bring it back and stand with it. They become moral compass in their generation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you are the type that like following the multitude, like to do what is common, then get ready. You cannot be a generational leader. You can't be a transformer. You can't be a reformer. The Bible does not change. The principles are the same from generation to generation. We're not talking about you going to manufacture something on your own. No. Go back to the book and see what it is. Holiness is still holiness. Whether the generation likes to mess around or not. Pull it out and stand. You become part of the moral compass for your generation. That's when you become sought after. Because do you know the amazing thing? Even arm robbers, even thieves, don't want anybody to steal from them. They appreciate integrity. Do you know that even womanizers don't want anybody to touch their wife or their daughters? Eh? So you see, you become relevant both to bad people and good people. That's why a Nebuchadnezzar can be looking for a Daniel. That's why a pharaoh can be, even though he's not, he doesn't want to serve the God of Israel. He's in the court, he's doing, but he's looking for the man because he knows he has integrity. Like in government, trust is rated higher than skill. You might be a better person that can rule the state, but when the other governor is living or the president is he's looking for somebody that will be lawyer. Loyalty. So, you see, character weighs more than competence. But character without competence is also a problem. Oh. Because who will hire you for your foolishness? Nobody has that time. Because you're a holy person. Holiness alone is not enough. But tell me, an effective accountant, whether he's a thief, and the one that he doesn't have... Um, I can't yet, you know, but 
your kobo will not miss. Which one will you prefer? Which one will you put in charge of your money? Huh? Because that other one that is very skilled also has skill to float your money away skillfully and you wouldn't even know when. And probably has enough skill that even if you go to court, he has enough skill to defend himself. He has legal. And one day you come back, you see what is your own in another man's hand. He's, he's collected it. He will just prepare documents and come to you when you are stressed up. You are about to go. Okay, you need to sign this thing. This thing is too old. Just sign. Just don't worry. I will take care of the rest. Don't, just put your signature here. Put it here. You put without reading. Tomorrow he starts saying, he says, sir, what is he saying? Are you not the one that signed this thing? Why are you blaming me for this thing? You approved it. He said, when did I approve it? He said, look at your signature now, sir. There are people that are very... That's why the devil is... It's not somebody you... Don't call the devil foolish. Foolishness is one thing he is not. Okay, right? The 12 laws of discipline. Number one. The first law of discipline is time management. Discipline begins with the ability to manage your time. Because aggregation of time is what they call life. Once your time is up, you are gone. So as time is passing, it's life that is passing. It's like somebody that is running fuel. You are born in a gen. Or you are driving your car. Fuel is passing. That's how time is passing. And your life, they pass. So, like, you know. So, when you add up time, you say that is life. That's what life is measured by time. So, the first thing to gain control of your life. To gain control. You gain control of your time. Second law of discipline is to limit your freedom. Create restraint for yourself. Put yourself under boundaries. Put yourself under boundaries. Create restraints. Billy Graham said, the reason he's known as Mr. Integrity in America is not because he is stronger than other preachers who fell, but because he created a boundary that will not allow him to do certain things. Like he would tell you, he would never carry a woman in his car unless his wife is present in the same car. He said, somebody now asked him, what if you meet a, a sister or a lady in a, in a night on the road that is face, you know, abandoned there, that's good Samaritan, are you not supposed to? He said, two things will happen. I will give her money to chatter a tax. Or if I have to carry her, I will invite another person inside the same car. He said, the strength of sin is secrecy. The strength of evil is secrecy. You see how this I fellow, a little child, three years old, walk into that room, all the demon of fornication leaves you. That tells you, stop creating room for the flesh. You create environment that nurture weaknesses, you're going to be weak. Create environment that nurture your potentials, that nurture your faith, that nurture your character. Because environment is a very powerful thing. There's a pastor that came there, he was doing counseling in a hotel. And... And he's ministering to pregnant women, people looking for food. I told our leaders, I said, mark that man. He's going to tumble so much. Very soon he won't be in ministry. And that's exactly what happened. Because even if you're strong on Monday, Tuesday, there might be a day of weakness. And you have created an environment that will nurture it. You don't do things like that. Number three, make yourself accountable. Make yourself accountable to somebody. Build a system of accountability around yourself. For example, now you say, okay, I'm going to be doing retreat two days every month. It's not enough to make that decision. 
when you get to tell your wife, these are some of the decisions I made. I want you to help me enforce it. Hold me accountable. The fourth law of discipline has to do with spending. Live within your means. Stop trying to impress people. And stop curtail your appetite. Curtail your excesses. Live within your means. Some of the shoes we bought are there. We are not even wearing it. Some of the clothes you have, whatever. And the amazing thing, once you buy that, and after a while, it starts fading. You want... No. Don't let these advertisers run your life. Every now, they bring out a new one. It make you feel that the one you have is useless. I don't know if you have noticed something about me. I have things, so, and I'm giving things, but if you watch me, you can wear one thing. They just wash it, make it clean, and I'm just fine. I'm giving risk watch it. That's why I'm always giving away things. But once I find one I like, I just wear it. I don't care. You know what I found out? It is not whether it is a designer's label or whatever that makes it, gives it value. It is who is wearing it. When you have cultivated value in yourself, when you wear something, people, hey, oh, carry yourself with dignity. You know, I went to South Africa, they took me to Mandela's place and all that. I, I saw they, they put crazy things, dollars. This one, $300. This one, and I was asking, even Bertrand say pass. They said Mandela was using it in Robben Island when he was in prison. They brought it, they put it in dollars, and people are buying it. What are they buying that for? You buy ordinary Bertrand say pass. I went to touch one, it's the same download. But somebody will pay 50,000 value for it. Why? It is Mandela that wore it. You see the man, he's a simple man. Learn the secret of living. It's not in this thing. No, it's not. The fifth law of discipline. Introduce rules and regulations for yourself. Whether, even if it's for your children, for yourself, even for your marriages, you have boundaries. And in a church, the same thing. No one were listing types of discipline. Like it's child, there is child discipline, there is church discipline, there is civil discipline, like in a society. Traffic lights, you know, respect the police, all that. You know? What is the next number? Six towards. Internalize moral values and principles. Listen to it. Meditate on it till it enters inside and it governs you from inside. Like the lady was talking about what the parents inculcated inside. Internalize these principles. It might not be overnight, but you can change bad habits by cultivating good ones. He said, if you do anything consistently for 30 days, it becomes a habit. The seventh law of discipline is learn to do the things you don't like that give you the success that you want. The philosophy of discipline is learning to do what you do not like or forcing yourself to do the things your flesh does not want to do. Like prayer, like waking up early, like curtailing things that may be sweet in the tongue, but they are not helpful to your health. Like exercising, the flesh doesn't like it, but those are the things that make you. One of my pastors said, You have not told us all the truth. How you work so hard and you're still healthy. I said, I exercise every day. One stress has built up, I go to exercise. The other one is that when I rest, I rest. Oh, I rest. I sleep like a baby. Failures like to do only the things they like. They only do, do the things that are easy. They only do the things that they enjoy. Failures like to do only the things that they like. They only do the things that are easy. They only do the things that they enjoy. 
But if you live like that, you will conquer nothing in this life. You must learn to force yourself to do the things that you need to do, even though you may not like it. You need to force your flesh to comply, even though you do not want to. That is one of the laws of this. That's what Paul meant, but I put my body on that and put it under subjection. The eighth law of discipline, create daily routines. Daily. Whatever he said that you have to build it into your daily plan, after you practice it over time, it becomes a habit. When a particular discipline becomes a habit, it doesn't look that hard anymore. And to make it that way, you have to build it into daily or weekly. There are some things that might not be built into daily that might be weekly, like retreat. Now I've said monthly. Can't be doing it every day. Okay, ninth. Don't try to please everybody. Learn to say no without feeling guilt. One of the laws of failure is to try to please everybody. You can't. The tenth law of discipline is planning. Plan things before you take action. Every minute spent in planning saves 10 minutes in execution. And that time you should have spent in planning you ignore will waste more time for you when you start learn to sit down to plan. Eleventh, set self-improvement goals. There are two major types of goals. There is accomplishment goals. Goals, I'm going to build a house. I'm going to buy this car. I'm going to do that. That's good. But also set goals for growth. I need to get this degree. I want to attend this DLI this year and I must finish it. I want to attend this course that will help me become a better person. Also set goals for yourself. I must master this character area. I must master this area. The twelfth law. Fight procrastination. Never live for tomorrow what you can do today. Procrastination is a sign of indiscipline and is one of the greatest enemy of destiny. Thirteenth law. Make initiatives. I'm trying to give you 14 now. Learn to take action. The only way dreams come to pass is when you wake up for sleep. You have to wake up and go and do something. All these day dreaming and all that, you have to take action. You have to take action. Be a person of action. Be a person who initiates things and a person who also finishes things. Did I mention that law? Follow through on everything you start. That's the fourteenth law now. Follow through. Not just follow up. Follow through. Stay with it till it's done. And finally, keep the promises you make to yourself and to God. The key to discipline and integrity is not necessarily trying to please everybody. But when you make commitment to yourself, and when you make commitment to God, keep it. Once you start learning to keep the promises you make to God, when you give people your words, it will stay. There is a principle of discipline that says, learn to underpromise and overperform. Hmm? Learn to underpromise and overperform. Don't come and make commitments you cannot keep. Rather, surpass the commitments you have made. I'll touch the first one I mentioned and leave you with it. Time. How do you define now? Is the beginning. How do you define now? In this environment, now is anything between. 13 minutes and 2 hours. In Lagos, somebody will call you and say, I'm coming now. You wait 1 hour has passed. You have not seen him. 2 hours pass. When you get there, you say, you told me you are coming. I say, eh, traffic. Why don't you say, I'll be with you in about 2 hours. 
And if you're on the road, you notice that the traffic, you might not get there. You send a message and say, I don't think I will be able to be there in two hours. I might get there 30 minutes late. That's integrity. But here, time don't mean anything. When I started going to UK, I was amazed because I learned that the British people discovered just two things and they conquered the world with it. One is time, the control of time. The other is management, government. Then after they added education, till now, these are things. Now, you start in a train station. They'll tell you, so, 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 15, maybe 2.15, this train will arrive. When it's 2.12, I say, let me see today. What you see, the time will be counting down, the clocks, they have it everywhere. In Britain, clocks is part of, they put clock as part of decoration, they put it in, in city. Because time is one of their discoveries. That time was created before man. Time was created before everything. In my own understanding, I thought time was created on the fourth day when God made the sun and the moon. They said no. That from the very first day, God said day, night, the first day, he tells you there was already time. If not, you wouldn't know which is first day or second day. That time is one thing that is, was there before you and before and he, he takes care of everybody. So that if you learn to master it, you will gain control of your life. You will have dominion here. And so I will stand there and be watching. I said, let me see today. So I start counting now. Next thing is five seconds or ten seconds to the time they appointed that train arrives. The door opens. As people are stepping there, you see that thing finally wind down to the exact. I said, what kind of people? And this thing is carrying millions of people yet. It delivers on time. Anytime there is any reason why they will not be there, they announce it a day ahead or hours ahead so that people will know. Put the signs. Precision. Precision. So you see, you come late to things. You don't finish your work on time. Stay a little late and finish that thing. On the weekend, get the extra sleep, you'll be losing. Or find some time during the day and take additional one hour sleep. Yes. I learned that those of you in hospital, sometimes doctors, they have a room where sometimes they go to just take a nap, maybe 30 minutes, one hour, to be able to continue. Eh? What? Code? Call rooms. You know? So that's how it is. The last I normally put there is build a system of discipline for yourself. Write it as the last. We'll show you how to do it later. Build a system of discipline for yourself. This part we looked at carries 40%. Is the one that makes people do the first part. Take note of it. When you live here, that's where you have the highest battle. Yourself. 80% of the constraints are inside. And that's where the flesh will fight you. And whenever you find yourself dropping again, don't worry. Pick yourself up and stay back on the course. Stay back on the course. After a season, your system adjusts. Don't go back to mental laziness. I see you doing tremendous things. I'm telling you. If you see what God will do with you, these are a weapon he's been waiting to put in your hands and they are coming now. I see a future that the enemy cannot stop. When a man lives by principle and by discipline, the devil cannot do anything about him. There's nothing he can do about him. There's nothing. He can't stop him. Can't stop him. You will start seeing your dreams come to pass. Whatever. But remember, it will cost you discipline. It will cost you hard work. God bless you.